Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of your Los Angeles City Council. Today is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. Uh, I'm Paul Krikorian, President of the City Council, and I'd like to bring this meeting to order so we can begin our work. Public comment will be taken today both in person in the Council Chamber and by teleconference for today's meeting. Mr. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. President. Bloomfield, De Leon, Harris-Dawson, Hernandez, Hood, Krikorian, Lee, McOscar, Padilla, Park, Price, Romans, Rodriguez, Soto Martinez, Yaroslavsky, 10 members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Very good. First order of business, please. Approval of the minutes of March 22, 2024. Councilmember Lee moves. Councilmember Hutt seconds. Next. Combinatory resolutions for approval. Councilmember Park moves. Councilmember Padilla seconds. Next. Mr. President, today is Tuesday and it's time for the flag salute. Very good. Uh, Councilmember Rodriguez, would you please be good enough to lead us in the flag salute? Thank you. Please face the flag. Right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Spindler and Greenspan, put that flag down. Do not raise it again or you'll be expelled from this meeting. You know that it's a violation of our rules. It's the one and only warning you'll get or you're out. Uh, and for those of us who are visiting for the first time, uh, there will be no disruptions of this meeting. Pursuant to Rule 12, disruptions of the meeting include holding up signs and banners that are larger than a piece of notebook paper. So um, there will be zero tolerance, Spindler and Greenspan. All right, um, with that, Mr. Clerk, let's please run through the agenda. Yes, Mr. President, items one through 29 are items noticed for public hearing. The Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety recommends to confirm the liens for items two, five, six, eight, nine, 11 through 17, 22, 23, 25, and 26. The Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety recommends to receive and file the lien for item one and as much as the invoice is being rescinded and to receive and file the liens for items three, four, and 18 through 21 and as much as the liens have been paid in full. The Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety also recommends to continue the lien for item seven to Wednesday, May 1st, 2024 and to continue the liens for items 10 and 24 for two weeks to Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. Items 30 through 37 are items for which public hearings have been held. The Personal Audits and Hiring Committee report has been submitted for item 37 and posted online to Council File Number 14-1763-S3. Items 38 through 53 are items for which public hearings have not been held. A draft, a revised draft ordinance dated April 1st, 2024 has been submitted for item 53 and uploaded to Council File Number 24-0114-S2. 10 votes are required for consideration. Very good. Without objection, members, those items are now before us. Do members have any items that you'd like to call special? I'd like to call item 43 special for purposes of a verbal amendment uh, to change the date from May 7th to May 8th. Is and there a second to this motion? Councilmember Raman seconds. Thank you. Councilmember Hernandez. Thank you, Council President. I would like to call items 37, 40, and 50 for special for a separate vote, please. Did you get those, Mr. Clerk? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Uh, Councilmember McCosker. Thank you very much, Mr. President. On item 26, I move that we confirm the lien for the property located at 1652 East 113th Street. I ask for a second. Councilmember Soto Martinez. Thank you so much, Council President. I'd like to call item 39 special for a separate vote. Very good. Thank you. Any other specials, members? Any other specials to my left? Any other specials to my right? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, what's available now for us to vote on? Mr. President, the Council may now vote on items 30 through 36. All right, those items are now before us. I see no members wishing to be heard. So on those items, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the votes. 11 ayes. 
And for the record, Mr. President, the ordinances for items 35 and 36 will be held over to Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 for second consideration, unless reconsidered with 12 members present. Very good, thank you. Um, item 37 was called special for a separate vote. Can we take that item up now? Yes, sir. Very good. Do any members wish to be heard? Seeing none, let's open the roll on item 37. Close the roll and tabulate the votes. Eight ayes, three noes. The item is adopted. Very good. Is there uh, anything else we can take up at this time, Mr. Clerk? Not at this time, Mr. President. All right, very good then. I'd like to turn to Council Member Hernandez uh, to lead us in our presentation today. Council Member Hernandez, you have the floor. Right here. Go around that way. Karen Gilbert, come on, please join us as well. Come on, join us as well. Come on, Karen. Come on in. Squeeze in, squeeze in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. Today, we are uplifting April as Second Chance Month and the importance of supporting the safe and successful reentry of millions of people who are returning from incarceration each year. We know that a criminal record can prevent formerly incarcerated people from obtaining a steady job, a safe place to live, quality health care, or a chance to go back to school. It often keeps people from acquiring a loan to buy a home, start a business, or build a future. And when we fail to provide the support that's needed to build a path forward, we often leave folks trapped in a cycle of recidivism with no real way out. Los Angeles is a city of second chances, of fresh starts, and of new possibilities. We believe in the inherent dignity of every person, and during this month, I hope that we can remember that we are each called to honor the dignity by working together to forge new beginnings of, for those who are returning home after incarceration. Today, we have several people with us who can personally speak to the power and possibility that a second chance, a third chance, fourth chance, many chances can provide. These faces and voices represent the gang interventionists helping to reduce violence in Council District 1, our community intervention workers who are preventing harm and violence, who are supporting families when there's harm and violence. And also joining us today is our Deputy Mayor of Community Safety. I'd like to introduce now our Deputy Mayor of Community Safety, um, Deputy Mayor Karen Lane, to share a few words with us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Council Member, uh, for the invitation to participate today, um, but more importantly, just for your lifelong commitment um, to ensuring that public systems work for everybody in the city and county of Los Angeles and just your commitment to this work, um, as well as br bringing the visibility um, to so many Angelinos that have been in impacted by incarceration um, in the city of, of LA. So thank you for your work and your voice. Um, thank you to so everyone who came here today. It is good to see so many familiar faces. And thank you to council for recognizing this important month and this important um, issue for Angelinos. Uh, for the last 20 years, the state of voters in the state of California have supported initiatives to actually increase public investment and in prevention, intervention, and reentry services. But as a, as a city, we struggle to get those resources to the ground, like many local governments. We know, research has shown, that individuals who exit the, the incarceration system without support have a 68% to 70% chance of being rearrested in three years after their, uh, after their exit from the system. But we also know that when individuals are connected to faith-based and community-based organizations, often led by those members in their community with lived experience, that likelihood drops below 10%. We also know that organizations like the ones standing behind me struggle to get the resources that they need to adequately serve communities. Many times people are coming out of their own pockets to help people get vouchers for motels or to help someone pay the fee to get their license. Again, these are things that the people are doing out of the love and commitment to their own community. But we know these organizations are our social safety net. 
we know that, th that they are the, the lifeline for people to have second chances. We also know that they're leaders in our community. Many of you should recognize the faces here from last year when many of these same people used their voices to ensure that resources came back into their own neighborhood to serve the communities that they love. I saw them come the first hearing, the second hearing, and I saw that they became civic leaders in their community, advocating for their, their advocating for their neighbors and their loved ones and their family members. We know that when we give spaces for people to leave, they will. I'm happy I'm joined by Gilbert Johnson and Jason Garcia. Um, they are now the, the directors of the Mayor's Office of Strategic uh, Reentry Initiatives. One have cycled um, in and out of state prison for many years. Um, another who was actually incarcerated as a young person um, and served over 25 years um, in state prison. Now they're leading the mayor's initiatives around reentry. So when we give people time and space to, to lead, they will. And in the first six months, I was hard to keep up with both of them. Um, looking, identifying philanthropic partnerships to create reentry housing, um, launching an initiative to help increase dollars to help people clear their records, um, and being supportive of many of the organizations here. Um, so I'm going to stop because I think the voices behind me are far more important than mine, uh, but want to recognize again the council member as well as the council for recognizing Second Chance Month and what it means to our, um, our city and our community. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, for joining us. Now I'm gonna be introducing a set of speakers who represent our intervention workers. Uh, we have the great honor and privilege that these intervention workers, these advocates, these organizers work in CD1, do the work in CD1 from the north all the way to the south. So I am incredibly honored that they are here to join us today. I'd like now uh, to introduce uh, Jesse Perez with SEA. Hello everyone. <clears throat> so second chances. Second chances are essential to all of us, to our community, and to just all of us for the betterment of our people. Uh, just a few years ago, I was, um, I had just got released from prison, which I spent a long time, uh, long years of my life there. And before that, I was um, stuck on the streets involved with gangs and drugs so upon my release um no one knew what i was gonna do you know when i got out you know or even if i was gonna stay out or stay alive but i knew i had one thing in mind and that was to take advantage of a second chance so i reached out to an old organization that i knew SEA, solidarity enrichment action and they gave me that opportunity and um you know, I've been doing nothing but taking advantage of that opportunity, doing everything I could to help those kids who were like me when I was at that age. So I am the embodiment and representative of a second chance, what a second chance can do. And I, I'm not done yet, you know, I wanna see what my full potential is. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Now I'd like to introduce a guerrillera in CD1, Tina Padilla, uh, with Community Warriors for Peace. Good morning, my name is Tina Padilla and I'm the Executive Director of Community Warriors for Peace. We are a community-based organization in Council District 1. We provide violence intervention to the community of Northeast Los Angeles. I can remember a time when I had no name, just a number. I was called WA9414. I was not a daughter, a sister, a mother, a wife, or even a grandma. I was a number. It was when I reached the lowest point of my life that I decided to make a change. I was given the opportunity for a second chance. Second chances are opportunities for individuals like myself and my staff to improve their lives, rectify mistakes, and progress in a positive direction. Therefore, when I was offered a second chance in my community to start my community-based organization, it meant that my community believed in our potential to change. 
Second chance is aligned with the principles of justice and fairness. This is why I'm so thankful for Council Member Hernandez, her staff, because they recognize that people can change and grow and should not be defined solely by their past actions or circumstances. They also believe in our commitment to making positive changes and have helped us take personal responsibility to offer hope, belief, and a second shot at success to shape a better future for one and all. If I and my staff were not afforded the second chance to go back in our community with our lived experience to help others, many would make the same mistakes we did. The cycle would never end. We have been given the chance to reintegrate and contribute positively to those we serve. It is not a smooth surface. It's a treacherous climb full of failures and lessons learned. But when you finally reach the summit, the horizon is bright and beams the light of the future. It's never too late to make a change, to take a chance, to forever break the cycle of generational curses. I strongly encourage you to begin your climb today. Though we can't go back and make a brand new start, we can start from now and make a brand new ending. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tina. Now I'd like to introduce another person who has been dedicating himself to his community. And you know, I, I said, that Tina's a guerrillera, folks, these folks are warriors, but the fact is that this work is done with love. They come back every single day because they love their community, they have been shown love, and that is also what a second chance means. So I'd like to bring up Tony Gonzalez with Homies Unidos. Hello, thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Um, my name is Tony Gonzalez. Um, um, I'm with Homies Unidos. Um, I'm a peace ambassador at Homies Unidos. I would like to show my appreciation today to City Council One and Homies Unidos. Um, appreciation for the, sec for the second chance I have now to help the community I once harmed, harmed with vandalism and violence. To be, able to, to be able to offer a second opportunity to others in the community, to help friends and families through their struggles, to help brothers and sisters that were once considered enemies, I can truly say it's a blessing. Um, I conduct homeless outreach to reach homeless individuals impacted by gang violence in the first council district of Los Angeles. We target formerly incarcerated, probation, parole, gang involved um, individuals and immigrant youth. We help members of our community with their transition by providing reentry services, youth services, intervention prevention, supportive services, safe passages, tattoo removal, practice problem solving, providing hygiene kits, food bags, getting them job and document ready, connecting them to various resources and service providers to help with the transition from the streets into a safe work environment. Um, I could not do this with the help of my team um, and the rest of the team who are out here today and for, with the help of Council District 1. We would like to give a special thanks um, to Ms. Councilwoman Eunice Hernandez for the hard work, dedication, and leadership in our community. Um, we have had the privilege to work alongside of her, and we could say that all the work she does, it comes from the heart. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Tony. Now I would like to invite uh, Will Melendez with Healing Urban Barrios. Uh, Healing, Healing Urban Barrios Hub does a lot of phenomenal work, both in the uh, middle part of our district, but also in the southern part of our district. and. Again, it's another example of give, give, giving love back to the community through food, through investment in their young people, and even giving diapers. I've been uh, at events with Aaron Lincoln Heights, and you know, a young person needs diapers for their baby. And they came to Healing Urban Barrios and asked for them, and they got them. And I think that's a perfect example of community trusting these individuals to deliver, um, and that they know that they can lean on them. So please, uh, Will, would you share a few words with us? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to thank everyone for giving me the chance to speak today. Uh, Councilwoman Eunice from City One. Um, my name is Will Melendez, and I come from an area from Koreatown. You know, the important look at everybody right here. We're a product of the Second Chance. You know, um, I've been to state prison and I've been to federal prison, and before these agents, before I knew that these agencies exist, there was nothing for me out here. Nobody wanted to hire me. Even though I had an education, I went to school for diesel mechanic and I had good jobs. But after being locked up, nobody wanted to hire me. So every time that I would come back out, 
I would just go back to the neighborhood and go back inside, and go back into prison. You know, there's even times that I just let go. And I say, you know what? Take me back in. There's nothing for me out here. But after coming out of the feds and I found out about agencies like Killing Urban Barrios, Homies Unidos, Community Warriors for Peace, there was hope for me. Now I'm able to uh, give back to my community, give that hope to the rest of the people. You know, all the training that, that, that we've done through GRID, I've, I've learned to use this instead of this to resolve conflicts between other neighborhoods. In our community, we have stuff that is, 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 it was rare. We have different communities working together now out in, in Koreatown. Not only, not only that, you know, we've had the privilege to, to bring food and all types of resources to our community. And I want to thank <clears throat> Councilwoman uh, Eunices also for allowing uh, me to bring the, the car culture out to certain areas in City One that you've never seen before. You know, now you have the lowrider bombs in certain areas, people have never seen that before. And I'm proud, I'm proud for everything that, that, that you guys do and, and, and Councilwoman Eunices does for us too. So thank you. Thank you, Will. Now I'd like to introduce Alexis Cabrera with Hiluna Health, please. Would you share a few words with us? Good morning, everybody. My name is Alexis Cabrera. Um, growing up as a kid, I was born and raised in CD1. Um, I bear witness to all the violence, all the drugs, the broken homes, the dysfunction in the area. Later on in my adult years, my young adult years, I no longer witnessed it. I became part of the problem. Um, it was rough, you know. Never, never in my life did I think I was gonna cause so much harm to the community that I grew up in. Later down the road, you know, life, life had a funny joke for me. Whether it being destiny or God, they gave me a second chance. Um, I never thought I would be in the situation where I am now, where I'm able to give back to the community that I broke. Um, the goal now is just to connect with those families, those broken homes, foster the relationships that we have with those community members in the area. Everyone deserves a second chance, like you mentioned. It might not be a second, it might be a third, it might be a fourth. We all deserve those chances, no matter what we've done in our past. Our past is in our past. Now we look towards the future. Um, I'm grateful for everybody that, that's here, my colleagues. We're all, we're all from the same environment. We're all product of the, the environment, and we're all here to thrive for the youth for the community members that do deserve those second chances. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. I'd now like to introduce Adrian Caceras with Paving the Road to Success, a, a new organization, but not new to this work. Uh, the leader has been doing this work for a long time in our district and very excited for, for the growth that's happening because that's creating more opportunities for people to get access to care and services and support. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you guys. Um, thank you, uh, thank you, City Council um, Hernandez, for basically providing the resources, and thank you for uh, um, Mrs. Lane, right? And I just want to say thank you because uh, even though it's the first time I've met you, I just hear the great work that you guys are putting into our communities, and I just want to say thank you. But I feel like you set up the theme for today, which is when giving the opportunity to lead. There's great. There's great. There's a great opportunities that, that that we're able to we're able to take these opportunities and run with them, right? So my name is Adrian Caceres. I was born and raised in Koreatown. Um, I'm part of that revolving door of incarcerations, drug addiction, mental health, and trauma. Um, being homeless, I will, I got to meet um, Mrs. Valle, which is a CEO for Paving the Road to Success. And many times she would always at that time she was a case manager and she would drive around, do her work around my neighborhood, and I was, I was here, but I was never too eager to participate in these services because I believe that if people in my own family didn't want to associate with me, if my own family betrayed me, why would I think that a complete stranger would want to interact, let alone go that extra mile to, to assist me? 
And in the process, not only did she went the extra mile, but I, she's epitome of, of success. If you're able to give back to your community, sky's the limit. So after she gave me the opportunity, she provided resources. I seen that she was genuine without expecting anything in return. Um, I got to be a part of uh, the summer night lights and various programs. Um, and eventually I was able to grow and blossom. And today I am the board chief administrator for Paving the Road to Success. <clears throat> and given this opportunity, what we do is we orchestrate a lot of community events where we do um, toy, uh, toy, toy giveaways, uh, blankets giveaway. There's, there's a lot of things that, that we're in the process of, of creating and developing so we could pr provide for our community. Um, today, I am a straight A student at UC Berkeley. Um, and, and that's something that I really take pride because if given the opportunity, we are able to lead, right? I'm also a certified gang expert through Loyola Marymount, which I just recently finished. And I'm, I wanted my goal is to be able to bring back these resources to my community and empower members from our community so they could have the same trajectory that I have. My next goals are to be able to um, give back, like I said, bring some of these resources back to my community and uh, just c continue to show that if given the chance, we're able to thrive and, uh, you know, Harvard or Yale, I'm on my way. Thank you so much, Adrian. Um, thank you all for sharing your stories with us. And we would like to present you all with some certificates. Um, as we're doing this, I just want to share that I'm incredibly proud of all of you for all the work that y'all do, for the love that you give your communities, for coming back each day, um, for throwing down with us when we're doing homeless, homelessness outreach, for being a leader, and for continuing to create more leaders so that it's not just one hand at the table, but many hands at the table. I'm incredibly honored that y'all do this work in CD1, and I can't wait to see this work. Council Member Hernandez, yes. before you do yes. the presentation, we have a whole bunch of people who would like to speak. So if you would just hang tight for one second, I'd like to call in Council Member Rodriguez, followed by Council Member Padilla. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez, for bringing in this presentation. And I want to thank you all for your work. You know, this council was instrumental in advancing resources in the last budget to make sure that you were all properly trained on the intervention uh, strategies that would be helpful and more effective in systematizing the work. We need to make sure that it's consistent across the city and we wanna make sure that you guys are resourced with the right tools uh, for being successful in your intervention approaches. And so I wanna thank you for the work that you're doing because it's a very important part of our public safety strategy in the city and making sure that even in the times when we are approaching very fiscal difficult, you know, uh, fiscally difficult circumstances. We need to make sure that we are most prudent with these resources. And more importantly, that we are investing in the front end for our youth. That's why the Youth Development Department was a very important endeavor uh, that I wanted to see to make sure that we, you know, we could actually start people off on the right path. But Tina, I thought what you said was very beautiful and I wanna thank you for having the strength to share your story and all of you for sharing your stories uh, because it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And you all are really exemplifying that there are important opportunities for everyone to find a brighter path forward. But I think it's most important, and I, I say this all the time with everything that we do, Prevention is the most cost-effective way for us to have a safer city going forward. And the lessons that you're providing and, and teaching young people, it's important that we also match that, marry that with the opportunities for them to identify what their brighter path is going forward to begin with. And knowing that they're supported by a city with the number of resources that help meet them where they are. And so I want to thank you all very much for the work that you're doing. It's a very important part of our public safety strategy. But what's most important is making sure that we're effective in the tools that provide you also with the trauma-informed care that we know that many of you in the intervention strategies endure a great deal of trauma and uh, really kind of re-inflicting that trauma as you're providing those intervention strategies uh, in, in the work that you do. And that's why the training that we launched uh, last year with BUILD was so incredibly important. 
uh, I think it's important to sustain that because uh, you know while their per while the personal experiences are very important, making sure that everyone is is provided the same resources is is frankly more important uh, to ensure that we can be most effective in the work that we're doing. But thank you all very much for the work that you do, and thank you, Ms. Hernandez, for for this presentation. Thank you. Councilmember Padilla, followed by Councilmember Soto Martinez. So I want to begin by thanking you, Councilmember Hernandez, for bringing this um, and reminding all of us that April is Second Chance Month. Second Chance Month should help all of us um, know that we all have to play a role in alleviating the um, atrocities and the disasters that have come with mass incarceration. Um, individuals, communities, agencies across the country must recognize the importance of reentry and the role in supporting the safe and successful reentry of youth and all of those that are formerly incarcerated. For many, a second chance, as many of you testified, is your first real opportunity to thrive. When your neighborhoods don't give you the good schools, they don't give you the good parks, they don't give you the good things to do when you might come from a family when mom and dad are working all the time, right? So to me, this is something that is very important and personal, given what I have gone through with my own brothers, my cousins, and my neighbors. And it was this understanding, this anger of what I've personally been through with the system, that is why I know it's valuable to provide support and resource to those of you who have been touched by the system to succeed once you're home. Witnessing firsthand how easily youth and, you, and people that I grew up with, especially when we were young, seeing young pe men, girls, growing up in these tough neighborhoods, it's much easier to find family and be influenced and swept up by the gang culture and the violence when all you know sometimes is violence and, and bad neighborhoods. Therefore, I like to pride myself that when I came back from college, I saw uh, the need to engage and engage, engage in things related to prevention. I agree that prevention is one of the better spaces to take this on. What I what wanted to do was, without ever being paid, it's why I put together the Adelante Hombre Latino Youth Summit in the San Fernando Valley. And I made sure that my college friends, my educated friends, my friends that are thriving in blue collar jobs recognize that it is also their job, their role, their duty to help alleviate and uh, support those that didn't have the same luck. So again, today I want you guys to know that I'm a friend, that I'm an ally, that I know the importance of this, and in the long term, I think it's important that this entire council play a role on the prevention side, and also in improving public safety with community approaches and recognizing the importance of second chances because it's not feasible or realistic to continue this narrative of tough on crime and allowing for our state budgets to be sucked up by prisons full of individuals that if they are given the correct resources, um, they can actually be very productive members of our society. Second chances are key, and I applaud all of those of you who are in the work and taking it on. Thank you again. Thank you. Councilmember Soto Martinez, followed by Councilmember Harris Dawson. Thank you, Council President. I uh, want to say thank you so much, Councilmember Hernandez, for coming here and bringing so many amazing people, and Deputy Karen Lane also for uh, being part of this presentation, and for Jesse, Tina, Tony, William, Alex, and Edgar. I hope you know that, that we see you, we see the work that you're doing, but everyone also here that's doing the work every single day. And I think this is a perfect example of how it shows that no one is beyond redemption, that we do not throw people away. And every single day, each of you go out into the community and give love, compassion, life skills, and attention to things that perhaps you were not afforded in your own youth. And so I think that shows how you were able to take a very negative experience and turn it into a very positive and this is a good example of why we should be investing in programs such as, such as these. We know that when we invest in people, people can go on and be a, 
a, a student at Berkeley with straight A's. It's just a beautiful, beautiful example. And I think that um, a lot of council members here um, come with that passion, come with that vision. But speaking on personal, a personal note, you know, I was a high school dropout. I was on probation as a juvenile, and it was the attention that many people gave me that put me in a very different direction. And I think there's a lot of us here on this council that will continue to fight every single day until every person that lives in this city is treated the same way we would treat our family member. And that means to never give up on them. And so thank you again for all the amazing work and uh, just keep it going and, and si se puede. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Harris Dawson, followed by Councilmember Price. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. President, and thank you to all the members who've spoken already. I uh, truly appreciate it, your words and associate myself with them. I want to uh, continue in the recognition of our colleague, Councilmember Hernandez. I've been on this council eight years. I don't know that we've ever had a recognition of Second Chance Month in April, so thank you for bringing that forward to the uh, to, to the Los Angeles uh, City Council. And it's so appropriate that we're here uh, this Monday. Uh, you know, those of us from various Christian faith traditions celebrated Easter this weekend. Easter is very much a story about providing the way for folks to have a second chance because all of us in this room, all of us in the, under the sound of my voice, any human being that you encounter at some point in their life needed somebody to give them a second chance. That is the basis of our equity as, as human beings. I'm especially proud of you standing before us because your second chance required you to stand up and say, I got it wrong the first time. And to do it in public where everybody can see. And that's a big, big deal that not everybody is able to do. And so I'm especially proud and grateful to all of you. You are, are shining examples of the truth that I try to live by, and I think so many Angelinos try to live by, and that is that no human being is disposable. All of us have potential, and it's going to take all of us to solve the challenges that we all face. So thank you all so much, and thank you for celebrating Second Chance Month with us. Thank you. Councilmember Price, followed by Councilmember De Leon. Th thank you, Mr. President. First of all, uh, Councilwoman Hernandez, thank you. For, for leading the way uh, this morning. And Deputy Mayor, appreciate your presence. Uh, but most importantly, we just appreciate the presence of, of our heroes and our sheroes. Give yourselves a hand again. <laughs> you know, second chances are so very important, especially in our community, especially, especially now. Uh, I had a chance to work with many of you uh, several years ago when we worked on Ban the Box. Uh, again, a, a, an effort to try to expand uh, the pool of, uh, of employment opportunities, not to, not to restrict it. It also it, it impacts uh, rental housing and credit and all sorts of things. And so, again, just want to say thank you for your, for your efforts, for your ongoing efforts, uh, recognizing the fact that we all have something to give. Uh, and uh, second chances do matter. So congratulations. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember De Leon, followed by Councilmember McCosker. Thank you much, uh, Mr. President. I want to congratulate and I want to... Uh, Whoever is uh, shouting in the Cecilia. audience, be silent. It's Cecilia again. I just want to, to, to all the, the, the homeboys and homegirls here today, I want to give you a special shout out from the bottom of my heart because second chances are great. I actually believe in third and fourth chances for our community members. Because many of us collectively, I just heard Hugo Soto Martinez mention a few moments ago, which I think were poignant. Many of us come from communities where there were limited opportunities to succeed. Ms. Padilla just mentioned we have no parks, no open space, we breathe dirty air, we have liquor stores, we don't have supermarkets. We're always under the constant threat of eviction notices. And this is way before COVID. We have homies and home, home girls who have lost their way for many variety of reasons. We have public schools who have not, you know, done us justice as a whole. And we have created pipelines that have been manufactured, pipelines that have taken us straight to whether it's Corcoran, whether it's Folsom, whether it's Chino, Soledad, Corcoran, or Pelican Bay, as opposed to Cal State LA or UCLA or a community college. 
and that has had a profound impact on who represents in the state prison system as well as the federal system and who represents at a four-year university, whether it be a Cal State system, private independent nonprofit college like a USC or Stanford or Occidental or Loyola or a UC like a UCLA or UC Berkeley. To hear the homeboy say that I'm a student or I graduated from UC Berkeley, which by the way, you know, it ebbs and flows. Either it's the number one or number two public university in the United States of America and one of the best on planet Earth. And that watch out Yale or Harvard because here I come, you know, gives me a sense of profound pride because when we fall and someone picks us up, I love what Marquise Harris Dawson just mentioned because I can tell you this, as the youngest child of a single immigrant mother with a third grade education and the only one to graduate from high school in my family, being the youngest one in my family with a single mother who we grew up in a basement on 16th Street near Market Street near Logan Heights, it was other folks who picked me up. It wasn't because I had the greatest SAT scores, it wasn't great because I had the greatest GPA, because I didn't have neither. It was activists and advocates from the 60s and 70s who promoted affirmative action. I got in through special action. But it was someone who helped me, other folks. And that's why these programs are so important in the recognition of second chances. I want to give a shout out to all the individual organizations that are here today, but especially to SEIA, because I know we work closely together. We're housed together in Lincoln Heights together when it comes to food insecurity and helping homeboys and the homegirls, you know, find a better, more positive, proactive pathway to finding themselves and who they are and all the trauma that we deal with. All the trauma, all the violence that we deal with as a community collectively and how we take it up to the system, how we come back into the community. But all of you are collective leaders as individual warriors, you know, also imparting wisdom and knowledge and experience, real life experience into the young homies and homets in our hoods today. And that's why it has a profound impact who you are as pillars of strength and experience in our community. I love it that you all have come together here today, and I love hearing all the commentary from all of our council members, black and brown, here today who have commented on this issue, and soon to be our colleague here from the 1-5, Mr. McCosker. But you are a source of inspiration and motivation for all of our community members, not just in CD14 or CD1, but throughout the city of LA and throughout the state of California. God bless each and every one of you, and keep doing what you're doing to bring strength and love to our community. Gracias a ustedes. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember McOsker, followed by Councilmember Hutt. Councilmember, thank you so much for this beautiful and fitting recognition. I have not been here long enough to know that this is the, this is the first time we've done so, but it, I hope it becomes an important tradition that we build on. So thank you for that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Lane, thank you so much for the work that we've done together. I've learned so much from you. It's been a joy, a somber joy, somber for the work we've worked on together, but a joy to work with you. But I want to just say really briefly and humbly, thank you so much for all you do in your communities. Um, you know better than I uh, that the license to operate that you have in your community is unmatched. There's no one else that can do what you do in the way that you do it. I mean, LTO in Watts is different than in Wilmington, that's different in Harbor City, that's different in San Pedro in my district. And I learned so much from you, and I'm just so deeply appreciative of the work that you do. So I want to say thank you. Keep up the good work. I know that it's dangerous. I know that it can be thankless. But there are people that will never know, that are made safe, that will never know the things that you do in the middle of the night, the calls that you get. And so thank you for that work, and keep it up, and God bless you. Councilwoman Hutt. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Hernandez and, and Deputy Mayor Lane for this acknowledgement. What we know is that in second chances, you are working out of a labor of love, that you have had experience and that you are trying to teach other people that they can have the experience, but they have a second opportunity and you're here for it. 
And that's so important, especially with our youth, to know that there's somebody that has their back. And each and every one of you are sharing that out of love. And I can't tell you how important that is, especially in the 10th District, where Homies You Need Us is a constant part of the work that happens there. Thank you for the acknowledgement. I echo all my colleagues. And, and this should be an annual event so that we acknowledge the good work that you do to make our city better. And I think that's why we're all here. We're all trying to make it better. But you are the human sacrifice that's going out in the streets and talking to people and letting them know it doesn't have to be like this. We will give you a second chance. And this is so amazing. So thank you for bringing this to light. And thank you all for the wonderful work that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Council Member Hernandez. Again, thank you so much for joining us for the work you do every single day. We're here. Uh, we're coming into a budget process, so let's stay close to make sure that we can keep getting those resources to you all. Deputy Mayor Karen Lane, thank you so much for joining us, you and your team. I want to shout out Gilbert, who I've been doing work with for a long time, down with Prop 47, and just moving up from there. So thank you. So happy that you're a part of the city family. And just we have some certificates that we want to present to our reps. Go. Can I keep getting them? Thank you. Here you go. Tina. Thank you. Okay. Tony. Thank you. Who am I missing right here? Yes. Thank you. Let's uh, take a pic. Can we take a picture, please? Who am I missing right here? Over here. Oh, here. Thank you so much. Come on in. Let's get close, man. Come on in. Come on in. Yeah. I like we've been we've been together in a lot of spaces. Yes, thank you. We go in the back room to do it. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna go this way to go to the back room. Okay. Okay, Mr. Clerk, uh, what can we go to next? Mr. President, the council may reconsider items 35 and 36 uh, for consideration of the ordinances with 12, at least 12 members present. Two votes are required for con reconsideration. All right, those items are now before us. Do any members wish to be heard? Again, Mr. Clerk, the items were 35 and 36? That is correct, sir. Members, 35 and 36 are now before us. Do any members wish to be heard? All right, seeing none, let's open the roll. Okay, there's gonna be two votes on this. The first will be on the uh, motion to reconsider the items. So on the motion to reconsider, let's open the roll. And Close is there the a second, sir? Mr. Soto Martinez seconds. Uh, so on the motion to reconsider, let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the votes. 13 ayes. Items 35 and 36 are now before us. Again, on reconsideration. So again, let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the votes. 13 ayes. Very good. Next, uh, I'd like to move that the council adopt the recommendations of the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety for the liens uh, as noted uh, on agenda items 
1 through 26. And Mr. Clerk, if you could please uh, read in the information necessary on those items. Yes, sir. The Los Angeles Department of Building Safety recommendations for items 1 through 26 are as follows. To confirm liens for items 5, 6, 8, 9, 12 through 17, 22, 23, 25, and 26. The Los Angeles Department of Building Safety also recommends to receive and file liens for items 1, 2, 3, 4, 18 through 21, and 25. The Department of Building and Safety also recommends to continue item 7 to Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. Continue items 10 and 24 to April 16, 2024. And to continue item 11 to June 4th, 2024. All right. Is there a uh, second, sir? So I've moved those recommendations. Council Member Park seconds. And we'll take that up after public comment. Uh, next, on item 53, uh, Mr. DeLeon, you had an amendment on item 53? Yeah, I'd which like the to. the city attorney has? The city or, attorney has the, uh, the amendment uh, before us. You want to read it? And the amendment reads that I move that item 53 on today's council agenda be amended to adopt the revised city attorney ordinance dated April 1st, 2024, attached to the council file in lieu of any prior ordinance. And Councilmember Rodriguez seconds, thank you. Next, I'd like to call on Councilmember Hutt. Councilmember Hutt, did you have an amendment for an item? Uh, on item 29. On item 29, okay. And does the city attorney have the amendment? Uh, yes. So okay. the go ahead and read that into the record, please. The amendment reads that I move that item number 29 on today's council agenda be amended to adopt the following. One, determine the issuance of a liquor license at 700 LEEF LLC located at 700-708 South Vermont 3070-3086 West 7th Street, Los Angeles, California, will serve the public convenience or necessity and will not tend to create a law enforcement problem. Two, grant the application for determination of public convenience or necessity for the sale of al alcoholic beverages for off-site consumption at the above reference um, <clears throat> location. And three, instruct the city clerk to transmit this determination to the State Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control as required findings under Business and Professions Code, Section 23958.4. And uh, I'll second that. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to cut the line. Is there somebody else who wanted to say? Okay, um, we're good. Thank you. All right, uh, any other Amendments, members, or announcements before we proceed to public comment? And if and I may, Mr. President, there is a request to send item 37 forthwith. Without objection, that'll be the order. All right, Mr. Clerk, is there anything else that we can take up at this point? Not at this time, Mr. President. All right, then let's go ahead and read in the instructions for public comment. Please, Mr. Clerk, Mr. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. President. As indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call. 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for a participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. When it is your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask you to press star 6 to mute. Then we repeat, call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for a participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. When it is your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask you to press star 6 to unmute. To people providing public comment, when it is your turn to speak, either at the podium or on the phone, please state which of the agenda items you would like to speak to. You will have one minute per item, up to three minutes total, for the items open for public comment. We will tell you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you are not on topic 
or if we cannot tell whether you are on topic, you will get one brief warning from me or the president. At that point, you need to get immediately and clearly on topic. If you do not do so, or if you again stray off topic, you will forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we will move on to the next speaker. The items open for public comment are 1 through 29 and 38 through 53. So let me repeat that for everybody here and everybody on the phones. The items open for public comment are 1 through 29 and 38 through 53. Members of the public may also speak for up to one minute for general public comment, which will be held concurrently with the open agenda items. During general public comment, members of the public may speak to any of the items or anything else in the city's subject matter jurisdiction. For members of the public calling in, when it is your turn to speak, an automated message from Zoom will prompt you to press star six to unmute yourself. If you do not do so, council staff will prompt you once more. At that point, you need to immediately unmute yourself, or unfortunately, you will forfeit your speaking time and we will have to move on to the next caller. Finally, because of a brief time delay between the live meeting and the broadcast, two things are important. First, while waiting for your turn to speak, please keep an ear to the phone so you know in real time when it is your turn to press star six to unmute. Second, if you're listening to this meeting on, an on another device, please turn down the volume on that device immediately when it is your turn to speak. Between feedback and the time delay, it will cause a great deal of confusion if you continue to listen on your other devices. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, we are gonna take general public comment uh, now rather than waiting till the end of the meeting only because there's uh, just a handful of people who want to speak on general public comment. So as a courtesy to them, we'll do that now. So I'm going to call a number of names. And as I call your name, please make your way to your left, uh, the, that side of the, the chambers, and then the sergeants will be able to direct you up to the podium. Lucy Cruz, you don't need to speak in the order that I call you, um, but please go ahead and, and line up when I do call you so you're ready to speak. Lucy Caruso, Lewis Sanford, Harriet Elliott, Leslie Cow, John Berdugo, J.L. Richardson, Barry Stein, Andrew Grabner, and Mike Greenspan. Ready? Good morning. Which Good item morning. would you like to speak to? 38, which is women's veterans. I'm speaking for uh, Renee Pittman Mitchell. She may be dead, as Robert Duncan may be dead. They're both dissidents, uh, whistleblowers against the CIA. Uh, by the way, get on the good, uh, get ahead of the uh, crowd reading this guy, quantum supremacy. He says that the CIA is very interested in quantum mechanics. Do you know that a quantum computer is a thousand times faster than a digital computer? I think most people don't know about quantum. Um, Renee uh, is a, I read five of her six books. Uh, she says she's a dissident. She's a uh, military brat. She uh, was, uh, and also she spent 10 years in the military. Um, I don't know why she said that she has been a, our target all her life. I never understood why. Uh, both these people are, um, uh, whistleblowers, and they both may be dead. But, uh, okay, now can I Thank speak you. on uh, general public comment? Yes, go right ahead. Okay, the back of my shirt says, authorities said my son was in a gang, impossible. Okay, and why do I say that? He died in 1992. This is a, um, uh, he went at a party. He was shot, supposedly by a gang member. However, not one drug in him, not alcohol even. This is a party at 10.30 at night. Is that amazing or what? Um, another reason why I don't think he was in the gang, the parents wanted my son, they kidnapped him. Uh, they actually had me drive up there and bring my son one be, uh, in early evening, and then he, I called, me the, called me the next day to pick him up. Guess what? They wanted my son. They knew my son very well, okay? And they wanted my son to be, uh, their daughter's boyfriend, okay? 
This is a kid. Uh, the, also, the uh, homeroom teacher said, I have not one complaint about your son. I don't believe the story that the, uh, is being told to me. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. If you could please remind us of the name you signed up under and the items you would like to speak to. Um, my name is Leslie Cow. Item number is 24-0160-S5 for the address 200 North Dillon Street. Okay, so you have one minute. Um, I'm just here to confirm the lien on the property. Uh, it, there was a public notice posted on the property. Um, I live uh, next door at 3107 Council Street. Um, the property has been quite a nuisance in the neighborhood for a number of years. Um, I moved in two years ago, and so far there's been two fires at the location, um, trespassing, crime, uh, multiple cases of littering and trash, and there's currently a homeless encampment set up at the property. Um, I currently don't feel uh, safe next door, so I'm just here to, um, add, you know, help uh, get, you know, ho hopefully get the uh, lien confirmed on the property. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next speaker, please. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. I'm very pleased to thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Lucille, and it's just a general comment, and we heard all those stories about these Thanks. second chance people, and maybe many of you remember me on the streets all over your Los Angeles. Anyway, I want to talk, I'll be real quick, I know you have a minute, and I want to talk about this here lemon stuff. I'm a seasonal worker in Los Angeles, and I bought this brand new car in Illinois. I'm going to be real quick. Suddenly, when I come to California, within three months, this thing turns into a lemon. And then I got scared. They said, you have to talk to this. I don't know why I have to talk to where you buy a car. It's where it happened. When I went back to Illinois, it's not a lemon anymore. So I think it's some environmental thing, whether it's the gasoline or something. And I was hoping that they could change the laws that you go through your insurance company. Because if it's a lemon, that's kind of like considered a wipeout. They go figure out what's wrong with this here. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. Which items would you like to speak All to? All items and general comment. Okay, so you have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin with the items. Uh, where is the half the council? We have item 38 that's um, lighting up City Hall for um, Women's Veterans Week on March 25th, 20, March 21st, 2024. It's a couple weeks ago, um, so you're paying that late. Um, so when does the, um, so, so what's the, gonna be the penalty for that? Um, since you're paying it late, or does the city just the city just allowed to pay everything late whenever they feel like it? Um, unlike the you know normal people. Let's see, we have item 39, a motion from city staff or B for additional police money for overtime for cops in CD12. Um, the city's already in a massive deficit over the amount of money they're paying they're giving to the cops and the LAPD in general. So. Um, so so let's let's not give more money to them and also just giving money to them in general is bad whether there's a deficit or not um, because the LAPD is violent and just exists to harass and assault people and kill people especially black people and brown people and indigenous people and poor people women and such let's see we have item 40 reward money for snitches from Harris Dawson um, we have item 41, lighting up City Hall in November. So at least McCosker's doing it correctly. That's several months away, um, paying it in advance. Um, not the city's doing anything for, to help people with Alzheimer's or to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Um, Alzheimer's. Let's see, we have another one lighting up City Hall from mid-March. We have a motion from Kikorian for a reception on May 7th in the Tom Bradley room. Paul, are you gonna show up to that um, reception and endorse someone using your position as um, council president for city council like you've already done a couple times? Um, are you gonna use that opportunity to do that? We're all curious. Um, 
Let's see, we have a motion from Kevin DeLeon on 44. No on anything Kevin DeLeon introduces. We have, let's see, we have a motion from Hernandez um, on 47 for um, reward money for snitches um, from the supposed abolitionist over there. Um, you know, this happened in 2008. Um, so, so, I mean, why why haven't we seen any motions on some of the re for reward money from you or from you for reward money on some of the recent um, cases where the LAPD has shot a civilian? Um, if we have any information on that, um, let's see. We have more money for police funding from Padilla. No on that. Turning off the lights. <laughs> General Public Burn. Comment. That apparently also costs four hundred dollars. Um, so yeah, um, seems like as usual, a lot of you aren't here, walking around, um, you should be paying attention to the public, um, you know, Kevin, you need to go, you're going to lose badly, you got like 20% in the primary, 20% of the vote, and the vast majority of the people who did not vote for you are in the primary are not going to vote for you in the runoff, you're going to lose badly, um, Isabella is going to just completely, you know, just she's going to get like 70, 80 percent of the vote in the <laughs> runoff. Um, so you're done. Um, Paul, you need to resign from the council presidency um, since you're using your position to keep continuously campaign for Adrian Nazarian during council meetings during pr count using council office press releases. You're not allowed to use your position to um, campaign for c candidates for elected office. Next speaker, please. Oh, and as our next speaker is coming up, I'd also like to call uh, Natty Casanova, Selfa Morales, again, Louis Sanford, and Thomas Reese, and Spindler. Good morning. Which items would you like to speak to? All items and general public comment. Okay, so you have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Okay. Please begin. All right. Ho, ho, ho. Well, first of all, let me be the first one to say, happy Passover, you scab rabbis. Now, we, I know we just had Easter, but I figure I'd... Get to the put, agenda, please. And anyway, let's talk about the naughty list because we've got 26 peop, parties on the naughty list for a total of $407,000 of liens. And sorry folks, they, it's not gonna solve your budget problems. 407,000 will not solve a $400 million budget deficit. Now let's go look at other things. Liquor, yes, convenience. Now Council District 11, another one, and Council District 2, well, that's Council Presidents, John and Vinny's. I've actually seen them over there on Fairfax, so it looks like they're having another unit. I'm glad we got off Prohibition, and we're just getting liquor back. I didn't realize they're at every single corner. Now, those, those, two, um, those, those two rewards that we don't seem to get paid, um, snitches get stitches, well, the one that goes back to 2008, even with 75,000, you're not gonna get anyone to come forward. They haven't been forthwith yet. So what makes you think it's gonna happen now? The other one, just standard run of the mill, it's not gonna get paid. Snitches get stitches. John Walsh, you were right. Now, what else do we have? Oh, we are really spending today. It, it must be Christmas. At least for the police, it is Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Now, where's the money? That's the main question. I mean, do we have to do a Susie Orman thing out here? Can I afford it? I mean, you don't have to because it can be put up in one word. No. If you're 400 million in debt, then how can you afford to go spending and have some Bloomingdale spending spree? I really don't get your logic. Obviously, the mayor got her advanced degree from USC and didn't have any math courses, otherwise she would know. We can't spend money we don't have. I just don't know how to explain it to people that we can't spend money we don't have. 
uh, I guess in math you call them imaginary numbers, but where is the money? Maybe you could say wait till next year, next fiscal year, and some revenues might come in. I just don't get it how you can be spending, spending, spending. I'm not saying these are bad programs, even Unisys, which is well-intentioned, we don't have the money. So I just can't figure out why we keep spending when we don't have the money. Here are the gloves. Let's pick them off the money trees in Council Districts 3 and 5. Now, um, Steve Garvey made a remark on election night. He's won the first game of a doubleheader. And I thought to myself, I guess he's going to be splitting the doubleheader with Adam Schiff. There is no way on this earth we're, I mean, Dorothy, you're not in Kansas anymore. And the Giant fans are going to get a second Christmas. It, it comes in November. They hate the Dodgers. If you think he's going to lose statewide, wait till you see the areas in the Bay Area, the San Francisco Giant fans, the opportunity to vote against the Dodger, who has two chances, slim and none. I mean, B Schiff is not the greatest candidate on the planet, but... How can I say how weak Garvey is? Beat Schiff, he can't beat his meat. I mean, this, it's just the fact that Katie Porter was just this fat cunt that couldn't run a campaign and had an incompetent staff that he's backed into it. He's going to lose. Next speaker, please. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. If you could please remind us of the name you signed up under and the items you would like to speak to. Jay Richardson, uh, General Public Comments. Okay, so you have one minute. The subject is AIs. On many radio stations, especially religious, not many, at least one, is always mentioning the subject AI about every half hour. On the stock market, they sell a share of AI for 20 cents uh, a share. I don't know where that is right now. Uh, some magazine articles have thousands and thousands of words in regard to AIs, and after you read it, you say, what does that mean? AIs are wonderful inventions. They're wonderful. They're going to help, the pu they're going to help us tremendously. But after you read it, you don't know what they're talking about, AIs. The labor unions haven't spoken on AIs, and the general public is fickle. You know, where the general public is going on AIs. That's all. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. If you could please remind us of the name you signed up under and the items you would like to speak to. Good morning. Lewis Sanford, CD4, general comment. Okay, so you have one minute. Please begin. Thank you. Tomorrow, a 70-year-old HCM and closes in Studio City. Why? Because this council approved a CUP for the private Harvard-Westlake School to destroy Weddington Golf and Tennis and build its own super school sports complex. Your vote last November also approves four years of demolition, disruption and construction, and once finished, will produce increased traffic and noise, and a stench Studio City will remember forever. Let's be clear, after Mr. Kokori and Ms. Raman caved to the school's multi-million dollar PR campaign, they made you complicit by rubber stamping the CUP. It's clearly private interest trumping public interest. The school's 900 students trumping Studio City's 40,000 residents. But there's still time, if you're bold enough and brave enough to right this wrong and revoke the school's CUP. It's time, everybody, to once again represent the people. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. Good morning. If you could please remind us of the name that you signed up under and the items you would like to speak to. Thomas Therese, item number eight, general comment. Okay, so you have one minute for the item and one minute for general public comment. Please I'm begin. Here, I'm here today. Uh, a property at 1154 West 67th Street that had a homeless encampment that was set up and I was being fined by the building and safety for repairs and demolition. I went to uh, the police department several times and put a trespassing sign 
Uh, and the police department told me they could not remove them. Well, they wouldn't remove them until we tore the whole place down. Um, and he said if we, if we arrest them, they will come right back and there's nothing they can do because of OR. And I'm being fined $33,000 from building a safety for demolition and, and cleanup. And I would like some type of assistance with um, the council member or someone to help me with this, how to deal with it. The homeless uh, encampment is gone now, but now I'm getting fined and a lien being put on the property of $33,000. And uh, sir, that's the property on East 97th Street? 67th Street, 1154 67th Street. Okay, um, if you'd like to step to the side, I'll ask somebody from Council District 8 to have a chat with you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. Good morning. If you could please remind us of the name that you signed up under and the items you would like to speak to. Good morning. Uh, this is my mom, Selva Morales Flores. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, item number 15, general public. Okay. So you have one minute for the item and one minute for general public comment. Please and, begin. And, and Ma'am, we have a translator, so she will trans. He or she, I can't see who's over there. We'll we'll translate uh, for your mom. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Elva Morales. Good morning. My good morning. My name is Elva Morales. Señora Siga. So sorry. Um, she's basically trying to talk about uh, there's a lien on her property and she was trying to see if it could be forgiven. Also with the uh, penalty and fine that she was sent through uh, through the letter. And you know, she's just asking for a little bit more time for her to, you know, uh, get any restorations that she needs for her property. Okay, and can you uh, tell me what the address of the property is? The address for the property would be 443 East 97th Street, Los Angeles, California. Okay, that is also in Council District 8. Okay, well maybe there's a mistake on, uh, on my list. So that's the 9th District? We'll have somebody from either Council District 8 or Council District 9 uh, meet you at the ropes to discuss that. Thank you so much for okay. your time. So if you could just step over to this side. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. Good morning. If you could please remind us of the name you signed up under and the items you would like to speak to. My name is John Dia Bravenal Verdugo, and I'm going to make a general comment. Okay, so you have one minute. Please begin. I'm the executive director of the Israel Foundation. I'm also the chairman of the Los Angeles Sephardic Political Action Committee, and I'm an investigative reporter for U.S. Senate News. <clears throat> I'm here today to tell you guys about an officer that's down, that's injured, and that officer's name is Al Labrada. There was an LA Times report that basically clears his name and stated that there is no evidence that Al Labrada tracked anybody. And I'm here today to respectfully ask that you consider reappointing Mr. Labrada back to the Assistant Chief of Police there was information that was withheld by LAPD investigators that basically absolved him from any kind of tracking. There is a confidential memo that's currently out there, and I think my time has run out. I want to thank uh, the city council for the work that they do. And if you could please uh, take a look thank at that you. memorandum. Thank you, very much. thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. And I'd like to again call uh, Thomas Reese and Natty Casanova. Good yes, morning. good morning there, pumpkin Three head. for the items and one minute for general public yes, comment. Yes, all Please the move. goddamn fucking items. <laughs> now, number 15, fuck the lean on number 15, 443 East 97. And we, it says CD8. But according to the bald head, it goes to the indicted one, Kern Price. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, so remember, 
Madam Clerk, do not blame Marchese for sleazy that he's not affiliated with. <laughs> and then what else? We have a lot of liens here. We also would like to goddamn fuck number 13, CD8. Shame on Marchese Harris Dawson, known as Weezer 2.0 to the FBI. Shame on him. A $14,000 lien. It was a homeless encampment. And he wouldn't remove the homeless encampment. And then they blame the poor landowner for it. Fuck the city. Remove the homeless encampments when we call. Like, Eunice's has a problem like this on Francis and Westmoreland. Don't we, Eunice's? And I hope we're going to remove that soon. Yes, she nodded her head. <laughs> and then we have other lanes. Nithia Ramen Noodle. <laughs> Turning Paul Krakorian style. Let's give her a hand. Well done. <laughs> yes. Bought and paid for. A barcode on her skinny ass. <laughs> a number four. Five, six, seven, eight, fucking five liens, totaling hundreds of thousands of dollars, making Hugo Soto Stalin Martinez jealous. You gotta catch up there, Hugo. Get, get moving on those liens now. <laughs> yes. We try to encourage good behavior here, people. <laughs> and then, of course, Kevin's big fat fuck up is on the agenda. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Which number? The last one. Yes, number 53. See, Eunices warned uh, Kevin that he can't use LAPD. It's too expensive. Now, finally, he listens, and he's correcting it for rent-a-cops. He's going to use private security instead of LAPD sworn, saving our budget about 400000 Let's give Eunices a hand. And let's give Kevin a hand as well for admitting his sins. <laughs> yes. Now, there's going to be a private party in the mayor's room. Fuck the private party. Fuck Paul Krikorian. And fuck everything that he does. <laughs> now, of course, what we have is 12 seconds. I wish we had time to fuck the rest of the agenda. Now we will go to general public comment general public and comment. tell everybody what assholes they are. <laughs> Yes, and now we are waiting for a ruling by a court of law on a slap lawsuit. So tomorrow, Eunices will have her committee. We demand the resignation of Larry Gross as the head of animal services. He attacks private speakers with lawsuits that we don't like. <laughs> and then, of course, a shout out to the LSU women's basketball team. Today, we brought, me and Mr. Greenspan brought a Confederate flag and we waved it while the uh, Pledge of Allegiance is being held in honor of the women's LSU Southern basketball team. Hey. <laughs> yes, thank you also to every toothless crack whore that lives in an RV in the South for pumping out those kids and turning them into little communists and prostitutes. Keep up the good work and fuck America. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Good morning. If you could please remind us of the name you signed up under and the items you would like to speak to. Hi, uh, Nati Casanova. I'd like to speak on all agenda items, please, and general public comment. Okay, so you have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin with the items. Okay. Um, in relation to the items, uh, number agenda item 47 with the reward for information about this cold case. Isn't there a better use of our taxpayer money? Isn't there a better use of our taxpayer money in general? I know we send a lot of money to fund the genocide happening right now in Palestine. Over 35,000 innocent Palestinians have been killed. Over 13,000 of them that's children. That's really not on our agenda. We could use that taxpayer money to help people here instead. Instead of funding, you know, more violence or more, you know, institutions that, you know, oppress and systemically, you know, oppress people here in LA, why don't we use that money to fund healthcare, to fund more social services? 
A lot of people are facing housing issues with the 4% increase in rent. There are a number, like a record number of evictions happening so, right now. Speaker, I can't tell which item you're on. You're welcome to speak to this during general public comment if you'd like, but please speak to the items first. Okay. My relation to that is that I believe that while this is, you know, $75,000 offered as a reward to be, you know, for information about this uh, case. Understood. So you've used your one minute on that item. Please move on to another item. Okay. Well, I'll move to general public comment then. Okay. You have one minute for general public comment. Okay. It's not an issue of religion. It's not an issue of anything other than not wanting innocent people to be murdered. In Palestine, there are people starving to death. Over 20, 21 children have died of malnutrition. There is famine. This is human enforced famine. Just recently, seven World Health, uh, World Kitchen aid workers were targeted. Foreign volunteers helping to feed Palestinians. It was intentional. Enough is enough. It's time for LA City Council to join the many cities across this country in signing a ceasefire resolution demanding that there is a permanent and lasting ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I've called all of the speakers who've signed up. I see no one else here wishing to speak, so let's go ahead and go next to callers on the phone. First caller, which items Hi, would you like to speak me? on? Yes, we can hear you. Which items would you like to speak to? Um, I'll say all items and general public comment, please. Okay, so you have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Okay, forgive me if I sound breathy, I'm walking. Um, so why don't we start with <clears throat> item 28. This is a liquor permit um, for John and Vinny's, uh, which is a bougie-ass, mediocre-as-could-be Italian restaurant um, that's going to open up in Studio City. Um, John and Vinny's Corporation owns a lot of restaurants. They own John and Vinny's, Animal, Petitwa, Swamek, Kismet. And the funny thing about them is that they were stealing tips from the host stand at Petitwa <clears throat> for months and months and months on end. Tips we were promised um, that were put on orders that we facilitated at the host desk were um, taken out of our tip pool and put into a server tip pool of which we're not part. They were stolen from us when this was brought to the attention of management. Um, we were gaslit from multiple angles. And then after they got in touch with their lawyers, they gave us a m mediocre um, payout saying that it was what we owed, but they wouldn't let us see any financials or documents proving that that is what they had stolen from us in the month or at least month it was taking place because it was taking place since before I arrived. Um, so I don't think you should be issuing liquor permits to companies that not only steal from their employees, but also leverage high service fees on their checks, indicate that they go to the staff. But then guess what? The restaurant also keeps that. Um, and the only way servers get tipped at John and Vinny's establishments is if you add um, more onto the 18% they charge you. Um, but again, the servers and people that money is supposed to go to aren't entitled to um, seeing any of this um, and knowing that the money collected is actually going to their wages. I know this because I worked for them and you could ask me. My name is Stacy. I'm sure you know who I am. I'll move on to another item. Um, 39 is police funding for CD12 to the tune of $80,000. Um, we just had a lot of posturing and grandstanding a few minutes ago where y'all were saying, you know, prevention is more important. We need um, to support people so that they don't need a second chance so that they're supported from the get-go. And then what do you do? You take money that you could be using for things like healthcare and education and housing, things that are known to prevent crime, and you give them to the, give it to the police, um, which according to data, doesn't prevent crime, doesn't stop crime, show up after crime happens, and also murders civilians with impunity. So what was all that talk, Imelda, 
Kevin, Monica, Ulysses, that we heard from you earlier about, you know, we're going <clears> to, <throat> we need to be investing in prevention, but then you do that. And speaking of, we'll move to the um, reward funding motions. Again, um, if wishes were fishes, we'd all cast nuts, but snitches get stitches. General and public comment? This does not fucking work. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Look at what happened to CD4. I can't believe it myself. Nithia clinched over 50%. It should have been somebody else. Because Nithia Roman always runs scared. She refuses to confront me. He, he. She should be ashamed. Her conscience ain't there. Someday they'll see. She's only in it for money. Big shout out to Smoke and Scan, Damon Brock Landers, all the Smoke and Scan fam, and a big fuck you to Nithya, and a big fuck you to Kevin DeLeon. Next caller. Caller, which items would you like to speak on? Yes, this is Jason. I'm a smoke and scan viewer. Good morning. Which items would you like to speak to? Um, good morning, Pumpkinhead. Let me get all available items in general public comment there, sir. Okay, so the uh, you have three minutes for the items. That's items 1 through 29 and 38 through 53, and one minute for general public comment. Please begin with the items. Sure, why not? Cool, good deal. And I like to say, you know, happy second chance month. I think it's cool that the guy's getting a second chance. It's cool and everything. But, you know, if they ever want to, you know, switch back, go back to something, I think they should maybe go back to a little maybe a crime lady. Still in cars, these kids are hot there. And, you know, it's focus games. We can use a few more, um, you know, um, you know, a few more good um, um, shows there. You know, so if y'all want to start jacking a few cars there, you, if, you know, you know, second chance don't work out, hey, go back to crime there. And I think it's cool because we got rid of, you know, you know, the ladies month there, which is good. So now these bitches can go back to, you know, you know, doing regular shit, get back in the kitchen and cook them damn grits, which is a good thing there. And um, I think um, maybe we could, you know, do something special, like maybe get some wet wipes down on Figaro or a little, little cleaning station because, you know, the other day I'm down there, you know, trying to get a little honey to do some things there, you know, looking for a baby eater. And I get this bitch and we go down to the fucking um, little 7-Eleven there back there. And she's back there working me off, you know, working on it there a little bit. And she goes spit on the head of it. And she misses the head of my cock and hits me right in the fucking belly button. Now here I am with a belly button full of slobber. So, Speaker, I can't tell which item you're speaking to. Please, please identify button. the item that you're um, speaking to. The item? I was talking about, you know, the you know the, the month for the you know the guys, you know, you know, you know, second test month. How you know they should probably go back to stealing, you know, kids or something if they don't like that. And then I thought okay, I was talking so about you know, women. Please month, move on so, to you know, another item. You've exhausted that. your one minute on that item. Ah, cool. Anyway, anyway, I was well, I was talking about down on Figueroa about us getting, you know, some nice little station there because this bitch, you know, I was trying to give her some of my baby batter and she done slobbered all over my goddamn stomach and shit and then try to rub it in like lotion. I mean, it makes sense. You, I mean, you just got to, all you got to do is connect the dots. The D-O-T-T-S. You just got to connect them there, brother. You know? But, you know, at Smoke and Scan, we're having a good show today because that's always a good thing. Damon always hitting it out of the park, whatever. There. But um, you have to jump on and check us out there, you know, if you get a okay, minute. Okay, so I still can't tell which item you're speaking to, so I'm going to move you to general public comment. Go ahead. Ah, cool. Well, that's mighty white of sir. I want to say what's up to the Smoke and Scan community there. Um, um, hopefully we have a good week. We have a few cases or whatever. Some of these second chances, you know, they, they change their mind. They want to go back to, you know, stealing cars or something there so we can get a, a chase or two that, um, you know. And it, just a little FYI for y'all second chances. If you go back, if you go into stealing cars, you know, the kids are good and everything. But if you get a little something a little quicker, that'd be nice. And try to stay away from the trees and, you know, try to stay away from the traffic. Because, you know, Damon, you know, he, he catches hell trying to get good shots for these damn trees there. Or here's the thing there. If some of y'all second chances want to go into, like, you know, maybe doing um, tree trimming there. Because, Lord, have mercy. These damn trees getting the damn way and all that shit. And then we can't see all the damn cases and stuff. Not a good thing there, and um, you know, I want to say what's up to all the because this little lady down on figure rule, you know, doing what's up for a little change there. We love y'all. Um, that, that's my women's month there. You know, I don't know about all y'all other bitches trying to you know, you know, do some things there, but um, you know, the bitches down on figure rule, you got to say what's up in them too that. And um, I guess um, you know, fuck the core anyway. Y'all have a good caller. Your time has expired. Next caller. Caller, which items would you like to speak on? 
Yes, uh, number 28-39-53 and public comment. Okay, so you have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin with the items. Stacy, you are correct. Waitresses and waiters should not be paid by their own tips. And if your employer did that to you, they broke the state and federal law. Those uh, gratuities go towards the waiters and waitresses. So somebody should think, somebody in ethics should look into this before they go ahead and vote and pass 28 and give them that uh, liquor license. If there's a violation there, restrain from giving it 28 now if they're not in good standings. Number 39, LAPD funding. We go to a situation, last December I told you, this is Richard Serrano again, I told you last December you were gonna have this financial problem. And here you are looking at who you're gonna lay off, who you're gonna furlough, or what you need to do to make budget. And you just sat in the public hearing and voted to give LAPD raises at four and 10%. You got $1.2 billion set aside for new recruits where you got a class of 52. You got 300 officers, or excuse me, 200 officers on a bounce back program. They come to work 11 times out of the month and get more than their basic salary plus their retirement. So how are you going to make a budget when you're as corrupt as they? So speaker, you've exhausted your one minute on this item. Please move on to another item. I just started on 39. I'm glad you're not paying attention again. So being 39, Emilda, you said that you were against people that have over 25 years of service. Yeah, here you are voting, yes, go ahead and give them a raise at 10%. Speaker, you've already talked about the LAPD item for more than a minute, so please move on to another item. Okay, 53, Kevin DeLeon, it's an election year. I don't have a short memory. That's the problem with everyone here. The thing General you did and comment. went forward and uh, to get security guards to do your work only when the cameras are around. We don't have a short memory, man. That, that tagging didn't happen overnight. You only brought it to light after the Academy Awards. Again, it's an election year, and I re hope the people do listen, because if it came out of your mouth, came out of your heart, and if you said it to the priest, like I told you before, it wouldn't have mattered. You're not the public person that you were before. God bless everybody. Caller, which items would you like to speak to? What's up, nerds and virgins? Brock Landers, Los Angeles Private Investigators. And All which, open items and general public comment. So you have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin with the items. So all this money for people that were murdered, I think this goes along with what Mark Quiz was talking about earlier with the second chance people, that we should uh, be treating people more like family. The Smoker Scan family is a good example of this. The people from different places, ages, sexual orientation, color, we can come together and all get along. Maybe we should expect this from uh, 
all the people in our in our different communities and when uh you know the carjack stab people are uh you know generally are not good people maybe we shouldn't be you know rushing to give them a, a second chance or uh you know give them framed uh your little pictures when you guys gonna do that for a you know 100 year old war veteran uh the money for the police with uh all this you know talk and grandstanding earlier about not having parks in neighborhood and not having stuff for people to do you guys are all talking about oh, like there's some boogeyman out there the uh Oh, the Diablo Blanco. Uh, but my question to you is, is who's running the city? Why don't you Democrats want to put parks into these neighborhoods? It's almost like you guys are responsible for the school to prison pipeline. You know, you guys talk all this about, oh, the evil white man, the evil Republicans, but you guys have ran LA for how long? And, and, and it's still this bad? Maybe you should give somebody else a try. Uh, let's see, with, uh, with all the lanes on the agenda, why didn't you guys take the time to ask uh, all those second chance folks to uh, lean like cholos? Seems like a wasted opportunity. Uh, to the party with the, uh, the mayor, you know, Smoke and Scan could have uh, taken that to another lay level. And uh, Paul, I know your time is coming to an end. Uh, I've been calling around for probably about a year now. And during all that time, I've provided uh, more to the uh, city council meetings and to so the people. Caller, this is not on the agenda, so please get to the agenda. Or I'm going to move you to general public comment. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Anis Holtz, what, do you, what did you say? So please stick to the agenda, or I'm going to move you to general public comment. I'm, I'm talking about the party after. Isn't that party for uh, yes, the, Nibble Face Paul? Please connect your comments to the, the item. Okay, well, if you don't, interrupt me I want to have to, to you know talk to you anyway so I've provided more to the uh, people of LA's uh, in that year since you know than you have the whole time you've been on the council so whatever award they honor you with I think it's only fair that uh, me and Damon from smoke and scan and stinks get one as well uh, number 28 uh, John and Vinny eat a dick general public comment as a white man, I've really been contemplating the struggles of black and brown people in the world today. I don't know if you guys know this, but young black men are the least vaccinated in it in the U.S. They fear the vaccine more than any other group, probably because the government gave them syphilis with the Tuskegee experiment and then watched them die. It makes sense that they wouldn't want to... Uh, take the, the, the jab or that they would have concerns about this. And it seems like there's a large amount of discrimination with uh, the vaccine mandates in LA where we're telling them that they can't work or you know keep their jobs. And do we really want to live in a city and a state that is taking the you know opportunity or opportunities away from people of color? That's why we should vote for the party that wants government to have the least amount of control. Oh, and the Tuskegee experiments, FDR. Another thing you can thank the Democrats for. Caller, your time has expired. Next caller. All right, that concludes our telephonic public comment for this uh, meeting. Clerk, what's before us? Mr. President, the council may now vote on items 27, 28, 38, 40 through 42, 44 through 49, 51, and 52. All right, those items are before us. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right, what's next? The council may now consider items 1 through 26 for the liens, and if I may read updated recommendations. All right, are, do we have any of these liens that are going to need to be continued? Yes, sir. Uh, Thank so you. the continued uh, liens would be item 7 uh, with the request to continue to Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. Item 10 uh, with the request to continue to for two weeks to April 16, 2024. Item 11 with the request to continue to Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. Item 13 with the request to continue to Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. Item 15, with the request to continue to 
Tuesday, April 16, 2024. And item 24 with the request to continue to Tuesday, April 16, 2024. All right, so should we vote on the continuances first or? Uh, if we can uh, take them all in one single motion, sir. And if I may uh, read the updated recommendations. Okay. Which is to confirm the liens for items 5, 6, 8, 9, 12, 14, 16, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 26, and to receive the liens for items 1, 2, 3, 4, 18 through 21, and 25, and with the continuance request as stated on the record. And this is a motion, Krikorian Park. All right, those items are before us. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right, what's next? Mr. President, the council may now vote on item 29, uh, which is a motion 29A, Hutt Lee, to grant the public convenience or necessity application. All right, seeing no speakers on this item, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right, what's next? The council may now vote on item 39, called special by council member Soto Martinez for a separate vote. All right, comments from either Mr. Soto Martinez or Ms. Hernandez. Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes, two noes. All right, what's next? The no council may now vote on item 43 as amended by motion Krikorian Raman. All right, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right, what's next? The council may now vote on item 50, called special by council member Hernandez for a separate vote. All right, seeing no comments on this item, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes, two noes. All right, what's next? The council may now vote on item 53, uh, called special by council member De Leon, uh, which is uh, Mandy motion, 53A, De Leon Rodriguez. All right. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right, what's next? Mr. President, the council has motions for posting and referral. They are posted and they are referred. The desk is here, Mr. President. Excellent. Uh, with a clear desk, are there any announcements, members? Any announcements? Seeing no announcements, I'll ask everyone in the chamber to rise for adjourning motions. I'll begin uh, with the journey motions to my right, Council Member Raman. Thank you so much, Council President. Um, earlier this meeting, I introduced a resolution <clears throat> commemorating Transgender Day of Visibility, which was on March 31st. The world observes this day to raise awareness about the transgender, non-binary, and gender expansive community, celebrating the lives and contributions of trans people. So while we celebrate trans joy, it is incumbent upon us as cisgender allies to also do the work to guarantee that our city is a welcoming, safe, and inclusive home for all LGBTQIA plus and gender diverse people. Today, I wanted to adjourn in memory of 16-year-old Nex Benedict, who died on February 8th, 2024, a day after being assaulted in the school restroom at Owasso High School in Oklahoma. While not a resident of this city, Nex's death was felt deeply in Los Angeles and around the world. A straight A student, he enjoyed reading, art, video games, and playing with his cat Zeus. Nex was indigenous, and his family traces their heritage to the Choctaw Nation. Nex was also non-binary and gender fluid. He used primarily he, him pronouns with friends, but also used they, them pronouns. Next was transgender, but he was also so much more than his transness. In early 2023, Next was targeted by bullies at school who tormented him for being gender nonconforming. On February 7, 2024, he was beaten until he was unconscious, a bathroom in the girls' bathroom, a bathroom that he was legally required to use after Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt signed a bill into law which forbids trans and gender expansive youth from accessing restrooms consistent with their gender identity. Just one bill of hundreds across the country targeting trans youth. 
Next, Benedict was just a child when he fell victim to the discrimination and violence that so many trans youth and adults face today, violence that is often dismissed or unreported, or victims are misgendered or deadnamed, leading to incomplete or misleading reporting. We saw this also with Nex's death, which was ruled a suicide, despite the reality of him suffering significant physical, emotional, and mental trauma from his attack. There are approximately 1.6 million trans, non-binary, and gender expansive youth and adults across the United States, yet 84% of youth report feeling unsafe in their classrooms. Trans and gender non-conforming individuals experience two and a half times the rate of violent victimization as cisgender people. However, it is trans individuals with intersecting identities, black and indi indigenous trans individuals, who are the most critically impacted by fatal violence. Um, and who account for 75% of fatal violence victims within the trans community. This means that it is our responsibility to look out for black and indigenous trans people and transitional age trans youth and young adults. It is up to us as elected officials and allies to do the work to educate ourselves and to do everything in our power to pass inclusive legislation and to amplify the voices of our most marginalized communities. We as a city must strive to ensure the safety of our transgender and gender non-conforming neighbors who face disproportionate levels of violence, discrimination, poverty, and homelessness. We cannot allow for next to just be another statistic. We cannot settle for a world in which our transgender and gender non-conforming neighbors live in fear for being who they are. We remember next not just for being who he was, but for the world that he was trying to build for us all, a world where we can be our truest, most authentic selves. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Rahman. Others, Mr. McCosker. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. I ask that we adjourn today in memory of Charles Sidney Hart, Chuck Hart of San Pedro, who passed away peacefully on March 20th, 2024, after a valiant battle with cancer. Uh, his life was marked by faith, integrity, justice, and service. Chuck was known as the Hawk when he worked as a homicide and robbery detective for the LAPD Harbor Division. Following his retirement, he became a dedicated community leader and activist. Chuck served as president of the San Pedro Peninsula Homeowners United for over 15 years, and he never ceased in his fervent efforts to reduce port pollution and to increase public safety for his community. He was also a master mason of the L.A. Harbor Masonic Lodge, a member of the Scottish Rite, and al Maika Shriner. Chuck enjoyed playing baseball, dancing, singing, fishing, water skiing, gardening, and most of all, spending time with his family. He was born December 25th, Christmas Day, 1935, the eldest son of Florence Woolacott and Francis E. Hart, his father. He married Sylvia June Stone on July 20th, 1957, after a five-month courtship. They enjoyed a happy life, and they had four children together, uh, Charles Hart, Jr., uh, Stacy Hart, my classmate in elementary school, Kelly Willis, and Amy Hart. Chuck was blessed with 12 grandchildren and 17 great-grandchildren. He was predeceased by his beloved wife, Sylvia, and by his brother, Francis Joe Hart. He survived by his brother, Dennis, of Tolan, Connecticut. His memorial service will be held at the Los Angeles Harbor Masonic Lodge in San Pedro, and he will be laid to rest during a private family ceremony. One of the issues that Chuck worked so hard on uh, was combating the risk of loss of life for the surrounding the Rancho LPG facility in San Pedro, which many of us know about because of so many motions that have been passed over the years, literally years. And I think it's appropriate that today we introduced a motion, and I Thank you, Councilmember Heather Hutt, for seconding the motion to look at an amortization study uh, to tell us how we can end the use of the Rancho LPG facility. And I'd like to say that we're doing this in memory and continuing the fight of Chuck Hart. 
May he rest in peace. Thank you so much, Mr. McCosker. Seeing no other adjourning motions, we are adjourned for today. Thank you so much, everyone.